Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to discuss how to model all sorts of primitives in a subdivision modeling manner. So let's just discuss what's this all about by switching on Goro shading and you're going to see we have those triangles in there and lots of geometry while a subdivision model is way more economic and would look um, rather like this. We will go through this um, in a slower pace but I just want to show you the difference first. So we basically going to discuss how to achieve these kinds of quad only objects in comparison to those primitives that oftentimes have a structure that is not really useful for high-end models. All right, let's start um, with the most primitive shape. It's a polygon. And even this polygon patch usually should be subdivided. So it has um, basically a symmetry. So there should be central edges running through it. And after converting, you would select the outer loop, which is not possible right away, but you could say select boundary loop and then you can bevel. The beveling has a nice option called solid. And I set it to five centimeters offset. And what you get there is a nice loop running all the way through to the edge. So we are looking for a structure or a topology rather that is running all the way through at all times having uh, quads only. So this looks like this. Hold down Alt and click on Subdivision Surface and you get a structure like this. And our main goal is mostly to have regular quads. And of course they get a bit denser uh, closer to the border. All right, you can hold down Alt and click twice here to just get rid of it. And next we're going to look at the cube. So a cube can easily turn into a box when you click on the whole model mode. And when you say move, then you get this little orange points you can use to just change the shape. And again, I would um, bring in some segments, one for each side running uh, through the center. Then you convert it. And if you want to be really clever, you can also select what you don't want. So we take a loop selection and we can just invert the selection by going to select invert and then right click and bevel again. It has everything saved. You just have to switch to solid. And there we go. Put this into a subdiv and it will look perfectly fine. You get these nice smooth edges, which you oftentimes want, which is oftentimes even the reason why you choose subdivision modeling. The next shape would be a disk. Now a disk comes with um, lots of subdivisions usually, but the strategy in subdivision models is quite the opposite. You take a minimum of eight rotation segments turn them into a quad model by converting it and selecting those diagonal edges. So just the edges that are not running along the blue and red line in the background, which is the world axis. And then you can just say melt. So that way you have four quads lying next to each other. And this would be the most basic shape, but we can also bring in a central line if you like by taking all the quads and turning this to extrude inner. So I put this more or less into the center. That way I still have an outer ring like this and a central patch like that, which looks like this. You can press Q to turn on the subdivision on and off. So this is preferable because those poles or these regions here are moved inwards and not close to the edge. This would be the circle or 
rather the disc and we can go on with a cylinder. A cylinder is a bit complex because it's consisting of um, a top and a side and it's separated. So after bringing in one more height segments for symmetry again, we convert it and first we have to make sure that those caps don't fly off. We actually want them to be connected. So you would just right click and say optimize without any options. And after that it's connected. And now we can do the usual thing. We can get rid of the diagonal lines. Also the same on the bottom. Exactly like this. So they shouldn't be in line with your world axis. You can press H to see it all again and then right click and melt. Okay, what do we do else is um, you see we have polygons very much stretched here. So it makes sense to just select, a, take a ring selection and use the edge cut function to just cut through those uh, lines once or twice more. So there should be um, edge cut without n-gons, that's uh, crucial. And then you just hold down your left mouse and either this or this would be fine. I would rather choose this. That's almost a quad model, which is going to look like this. And because this is way too smooth, we now choose a loop selection on top and bottom and activate the bevel tool again and hit apply. So now press Q and this is a perfect cylinder. You can shade it in grow shading to see it in pure manner. You can give it a bit more subdivision here so it doesn't uh, look, uh, <coughs> doesn't have those uh, weird corners anymore. And um, it's also sometimes nice to, while seeing the lines, uh, just switch it to isoparms so that way you can see the original polygons only. So this would be the bare minimum for a, a subdivision cylinder. And next we can um, look at a, a tube. The tube has uh, large similarities. Just make sure to go back to wireframe and give it eight rotational segments. But in this case, we have a bit of stretching here. This is getting um, after having uh, one more height segment, at least, at least we have really wide polygons on the outer side. So in this case, it makes more sense to turn to 16. So we have 8, 16 and 32, like you have on USB sticks. And again, we convert this. We optimize it so the caps don't fly off. And we choose a loop selection again choose all the extreme corners here and right click and bevel and apply. So here again we should have a very evenly spaced, at least on the outer side, evenly spaced tube. Sometimes you may want to um, reduce the tension on the corners by even bringing some edge cuts along the caps. So right click edge cut and hit apply. So that way, um, if you look at the corner regions, they don't jump that much anymore. And you usually want a very stable subdivision model that doesn't have a great deviation from the pure shape uh, you have without subdivision. So it shouldn't jump too much. Now the, um, I think last thing we can do or almost last thing would be a sphere. The sphere again um, has a basic structure that is not really convertible into a subdivision model because of um, these pole regions. They will look horrible and you wouldn't want a pole region like that and those crazy lines. So what do we do? You would uh, start with a box or rather a cube and give it segments through the center again. 
and this time you use a Spherify deformer which will give you a perfect sphere as soon as you set the strength to 100% you will see that all the points now shape a perfect sphere and um, you could even turn this up if you wanted to 4x4x4 four by four by four. and um, then you can just if you like connect uh, say current state to object which gives you a perfect uh, sphere this will look um, like this subdivided so you get a very even shape and it should look um, pretty much uh, like a perfect sphere in the rare cases you want a pyramid um, this is a bit fighting with our system because if you're um, bringing here some edges in then you'll see that you are um, have still triangles no matter what you do so if we take all the all the edges we can say bevel and just hit apply that way we get stable corners but um, yeah subdivided it looks rather yeah, extreme it's all quads now but yeah now let's turn them all on you hold down alt while just moving your mouse like a brush over these points and when you move stuff I would recommend to rather move the objects themselves of course not the polygons that would be um, wrong let me show it here don't move the polygons away from the axis like this but rather go to the model mode choose the move arrow and then we can just move them out one by one so you could just drag them out so you have a nice row of models and usually your goal is to have an evenly spaced um, look so you shouldn't have models that are denser than others so just for showing you that it's possible to do this you would just yeah basically set those um, set those subdivisions and that way you can kind of see whether you did a good job and have a reg regular evenly spaced topology or not and you can also discuss whether for example the box should have more subdivisions that's a thing you e easily identify again using ring selection and edge cut once and all of a sudden you have a topology that's way closer to quads which should always be the case oh and by the way if you want to tidy up your object manager and you don't want to have dozens of subdivision surface generators there just drag all the blue models out like so delete all of them but one create a null object for your models put it underneath the subdivision surface and put all the models in that way they get subdivided if you forget about the null object then this is not going to work it's only going to divide the first object in the list